So the name of my talk today is Reconciling Bottom-Up Harmonic Function with Top-Down Shankarian Theory within Fugal Analysis. So before we get into it, we need to know what Shankarian Theory is. It, it's a type of music analysis that we use for tonal music, um, for looking at the music basically from uh, J.S. Bach up to Johannes Brahms. Uh, and it also uses prototypes or models uh, to analyze this corpus of music. Um, and these prototypes, uh, they're hierarchical in that they produce levels of structure that come down from the prototype. And each of these levels is recursive in that we can apply a certain move or transformation at a high level of structure and then keep applying that same move as you go down from level to level. Okay, um, and here's an example of, I see, that's how it looks on the screen there, it looks a bit different here, but um, of a Shankarian analysis. So at the very top layer, that would be our prototype. And then the middle layer is the next level of analysis. And then beneath that layer is another level of analysis, just to give us an idea of what applying Shankarian theory looks like. Now, harmonic function. Um, is also something that we use in music analysis. Um, and it uh, employs three classes of harmonies. So we have abbreviations here. So T, which stands for tonic, PD for predominant, and D for dominant. And um, we use these um, classes of harmonies just for musical analysis um, when we're looking at a score. And we just look at phrases and we group the harmonies that we find within our analysis into these three classes. And they occur in this particular order as well within the context of a musical phrase. So a musical phrase would start with tonic or T, and then it would move to a sort of a middle region or a predominant, and then that would lead to a penultimate region, the dominant, and then the dominant would finally progress back to the tonic and close off a musical phrase. And when we use these, we typically use them only at the musical surface. So harmonic function, really the way we use it typically is um, in a bottom-up way. Okay, we don't often use layers of harmonic function. Okay, so now we have my basic idea of what Shankarian theory and harmonic function are. Let's look at two perspectives on fugal analysis. And we're going to start with a top-down perspective, so perspective number one, and this is um, by William Rennick from his book Analyzing Fugue, a Shankarian Perspective. So I'll just read the quote here. He says, whereas the surface and foreground concerns itself with developing textures and motives, the deep levels deal with the broad sweep of tonal and linear events that project a sense of direction and resolution. So what Rennick is really focusing on here is on the real top-down nature of Shankarian theory when we look at the deep levels. He's looking at those uh, structural levels that come from the top, from the, from the prototype, and project their way down to um, the score, the musical score, okay? And so that's really where his focus is. Now, if we look at perspective number two, let's take a look at what Heinrich Schenker says about analyzing fugue. Um, quote, the fugues of J.S. Bach are always determined by the subject, by its dimensions and harmonic content, and are controlled by a fundamental structure. So Shaker is actually having it both ways. He starts off talking about the subject, or the fugal subject, which is really just the melody that we hear at the opening of the fugue. And he's saying that that itself creates the entire fugue. When you first hear that statement, uh, the actual structure of the fugue subject actually creates the entire composition itself. But then he's also trying to have it both ways and saying, yeah, but it's also controlled by this fundamental structure. And what he's talking about is his prototype, okay? So he's kind of waffling here, he's sitting on the fence, um, looking at the both bottom-up and top-down perspectives. So can we reconcile top-down and bottom-up perspectives when we're analyzing the fugue. So, um, to address this question, if not answer it, we're gonna look at it uh, within the context of J.S. Bach's Fugue in D major from the Well-Tempered Clavier Book Two. So what we're gonna do is, 
Um, we're going to first look at some harmonic readings of the feeble subject and the answer. The answer is what comes right after the statement of the subject. After that, based on those harmonic readings, we'll create a formal plan of the fugue. And then once we have that plan, then we're going to compare that to more top-down Schenkerian readings and see how they square.